the reason I filed for the divorce is not so that I could be with Mr. Dorslag. It's because I got a screenshot of a text message from my family member saying that he had asked for nude photos. Oh. It was a one night thing. How is that even possible? We have a lot of people here on this earth, Mr. Bailey. Let me give you a news flash. They are products of one night stands. Did you use protection on that one night? No. That's a recipe for making a baby. I didn't even sign the birth certificate. Did you I not sign the birth certificate, Mr. Downs, because you really had a doubt? As me being a father, like I said, I've never had to deal with any suspicion of any of my other kids. Oh boy, grab your popcorn. Ms. Livingston steps up to the legal plate, swinging for a DNA test home run to prove Mr. Livingston isn't the bio dad of their toddler, Jordan. She's batting eyes at her ex, Mr. Dorschlag, convinced he's the real MVP in this daddy dilemma. Mr. Livingston, on the other hand, is playing defense, claiming his title as dad because, let's face it, denying her the X-Man drama is kind of his thing now. Ms. Livingston, you've petitioned this court for a DNA test on your 21-month-old daughter, Jordan, to prove to your now ex-husband, Mr. Livingston, that he is not Jordan's biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Livingston, you claim that the only reason your ex-wife is denying you are the father is because she desperately wants to have a relationship with her ex-boyfriend, Mr. Dorschlag. And then it gets soap opera spicy. The heart of Ms. Livingston's soapbox speech is all about the timing of her romantic rendezvous with both gents and little Jordan's mysterious morph from dark-haired beauty to blonde bombshell. A plot twist neither parent saw coming. It's like a telenovela minus the dramatic music and slow-mo gasps. Around the time of concession, I had sex with another man, Your Honor. But did you also have sex with Mr. Livingston? Yes, Your Honor. So why is it you believe other man is your child's father and not Mr. Livingston? My daughter, when she was born, she looked a lot like Mr. Livingston. She had dark hair and, you know, she had some of his facial features, but as she got older, she got blonde hair. Neither Mr. Livingston nor I have blonde hair, but Mr. Dorschlag does. She started to look a lot like Mr. Dorschlag. Plot twist alert. Just when you thought it couldn't get more Maury Povich, Mr. Livingston stumbles upon the text treasure trove between Ms. Livingston and Mr. Dewerschlag. It's not just baby drama. It's a full-blown love triangle with emojis. Emotional affairs during pregnancy? Cue the audience oohs and ahs. He knew before that there's a possibility because I was messaging Mr. Dorschlag on Facebook and he told me that he thought that he was the father, but even if he wasn't, that I should leave Mr. Livingston and be with him. Let him be my baby daddy. And Mr. Livingston saw those messages on Facebook. And that was while I was... Oh. Only Six after months I pregnant. Had to go. Drama level. Kardashian. Post divorce paper party. Ms. Livingston drops the Jordan might not be yours bomb on Mr. Livingston, spicing up the plot with hints of Mr. Livingston's own not so secret secrets. It's like a reality TV show, but without the luxury vacations and sponsored content. Your Honor, I told him yes, there was a possibility that Jordan was not his. Also, Your Honor, the reason I filed for the divorce is not so that I could be with Mr. Dorschlag. It's because I got a screenshot of a text message from my family member saying that he had asked for nude photos. From, from my a family member? Member? Yeah, from my family member. Oh. But wait, there's more. The saga continues with Mr. Dorschlag's cameo in Jordan's life, or rather, his ghosting. It's a roller coaster of who's who in the daddy department, proving that sometimes life's just a box of paternity tests. If that's the case, where has he been this whole entire time that she was pregnant? Well, the they, birth? she said they've never lost contact. Mr. Dorschlag, have you been and in why has baby not Jordan's life? I have not, Your Honor. I mean, I have talked to Judith about the whole situation. I've seen pictures of her. I've not actually seen her physically in person. Hold on to your wigs, folks, as the judge lays down the DNA truth bomb. Mr. Livingston. <laughs> you understand you have two children together. Yes, Your Honor. You have to co-parent, and you want to be as involved as you possibly can. Yes, Your Honor. You are going to have to work together. So communication, cooperation, meaning sometimes it will not be easy to make sure these children have the life they want in the relationship. You're going to yes, have to Honor. work together. Buckle up, folks. Miss Laws marches her ex, Mr. Bailey, into court with the confidence of a catwalk model, aiming to drop the daddy bomb on him for not one, but two kids. She claims Mr. Bailey is on the paternity denial train because of whispers from his mama. And you thought your family dinners were awkward? Stay tuned, it gets juicier. Miss Laws, you have dragged your ex-boyfriend, Mr. Bailey, into court to prove to him that he is the father of your 19-month-old son, Josiah. You believe he is denying paternity because of his mother mother's doubts. You also claim that there is a chance that Mr. Bailey is the father of your four-year-old son, Jamari, who has another man's name on his birth certificate. Plot twist incoming. Flashback to a teenage romance. Miss Laws and Mr. Bailey were high school sweethearts with a love story bumpier than a potholed road. After a romantic hiatus involving other partners, Miss Laws cheats, and boom, pregnancy alert. She spills the beans to both gents because why not make life a soap opera? Next up, the plot thickens, and you'll need a shovel. 
shovel to get through it. Met in middle school. My mother stays in Arizona, so I left middle school and went to Arizona, and that's when me and Mr. Bailey, and before coming back, I actually met Mr. Davis, and we was in a relationship for about two years. So when I came back, Mr. Bailey used to come up to my high school. You know, he never gave up on trying to get back with me, because, you know, we left off in middle school. Me and Mr. Davis was actually intimate for a year and a half. I never got pregnant. So that night, the first night that I actually cheated and slept with Mr. Bailey, two months later, I find out I'm pregnant. Here comes the curveball. The court dives into a Maury Povich moment with Miss Laws admitting to a sneaky night with Mr. Bailey while still with Mr. Davis. Jamari's birth certificate becomes the hottest plot device since the One Ring. Grab your popcorn because the drama's about to dial up to 11. Okay, so when I slept with Mr. Bailey, I was still in a relationship with Mr. Davis. Okay. It was a one night thing. How is that even possible? We gonna find uh, if it's We possible. have a lot of people here on this earth, Mr. Bailey. Let me give you a news flash. They are products of one night stand. It only takes once. Did you use protection on that one night? No. That's a recipe for making a baby. How old was Jamari when Mr. Davis passed away? He was two years old. He was two. Mm -hmm. It's getting hot in here. Tempers flare and accusations fly like an episode of Jerry Springer set in a courtroom. Miss Laws accuses Mr. Bailey of flip-flopping on his baby daddy status faster than a politician in election season. The room is thick with tension, secrets, and maybe a little bit of love. Don't go anywhere. The emotional roller coaster is about to do a loop-de-loop. -loop. When I first found out I was pregnant, I didn't have the guts to even tell Corey that I cheated because I was like, you know, I was in love with that man. So when I told Mr. Bailey, I told him second after I told Mr. Davis. And what Mr. Bailey said was, that's my baby. Did you say, that's my baby? No, how I'm gonna Excuse say that? Him not... and his cousin was saying that. Excuse oh. me, because you Wait, know yeah, you're with me. You, but that's not my baby. Can I say something? Hold on, Miss Laws. You told me yourself when I asked, is that Mr. Bailey's son? You said, no, it's not. I don't know. That's why I'm here. I don't know. I'm confused because I slept with the both of them, obviously. You couldn't make this up if you tried. Miss Collier steps in, turning the court into a daytime TV feels fest. She's all in on team Brother Davis, painting a picture of a family blissfully unaware of the paternity pandemonium. Think that's wild. The next testimony will have you questioning everything you thought you knew. What you're saying is that you have never received information to the contrary that your brother was this child's biological father. This is your nephew. Yeah. This is what your family feels. This is their yeah. grandchild. This is their nephew. Uh, did your brother ever express any doubts to you? No. He was so happy that he had this first child on the way. When did you find out there was a possibility that Jamari may not be your brother's biological child? I feeling because I, I was like happy with my brother, so I always thought that was my brother's son. Let's add some more spice. As if this soap opera needed more drama, the court pokes at the relationship timeline with a stick to see what slithers out. Miss Laws claims exclusive rights to Mr. Bailey's heart and bed, while he suggests her phone passcode changes more often than her story. Strap in. The DNA results are up and they're about to drop a bombshell. When he used to come pick up Jamari when he was sick and he seen me pregnant, he like, you know, this hurt my feeling. That's supposed to be my baby or you only supposed to have one baby by me. Being that he's passing, he never could accept the fact that I moved. He never said, that's my baby. I feel like that's my baby. And he couldn't have said it because he know and I know that we never slept around. We was dating. He was staying at my house. Like, the only time he'll leave is if we arguing and I put him out and he come right back. Drum Please, the moment of truth arrives with more anticipation than a finale of Game of Thrones, and hopefully with a better payoff. DNA results are in. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Bailey. Strap in, folks. Ms. Bronson kicks off the drama by challenging Mr. Roberts, the man she's always called dad, on his paternity credentials. It turns out, after years of playing catch and enduring dad jokes, he's doubting whether he's the real deal in the father department. Buckle up. The family roller coaster is just leaving the station. Ms. Bronson, you have always known the defendant to be your biological father, but have opened your case against him to prove paternity because he now claims he has reason to deny he is your father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Plot twist alert, Mr. Roberts drops a bombshell that turns his world, and likely his Facebook relationship status, upside down. Enter Mr. Banks, claiming he's the leading man in this fatherhood saga. The paternity plot thickens, folks. Grab your popcorn. This episode's getting juicy. You believe Miss Bronson was your firstborn until three years ago when your world was turned upside down with the news that you may not be her biological father, and Mr. Banks claims he is. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor.
Cue the emotional music. Ms. Bronson stands her ground, asserting Mr. Roberts is her dad, the MVP of her heart. Forget Maury, this is real-life drama, where the only father she's ever known is being questioned. And you thought your family dinners were tense. Your Honor, I feel Mr. Roberts is my father. He's the only father I've known for 29 years. That's my father, period. I know him my whole life. He the only one I call my father. That's who I grew up known as my father. So Mr. Roberts is my biological father. Mr. Roberts to the rescue. He wades into the emotional turmoil with tales of daddy-daughter dancing and probably some embarrassing prom photos. He didn't even know Mr. Banks was part of the cast in this family drama. Spoiler alert, it's about to get even more complicated. Well, I always believed that Jamie was my daughter. I raised her as my daughter, as the other children in my life. She only knows me as a father. I never even knew anything about this gentleman here. So 29 years. Yes, yeah. Yes. He's been through everything with you. Yes. Mr. Roberts, did you take financial responsibility for Miss Bronson? Did you provide for her in, in the form of support? Whoa, plot twist. Ms. Bronson's mom drops the other dad bomb during a casual chat, making Ms. Bronson question everything she knew about her family tree. Suddenly, Mr. Banks is more than just a guy from the bank. Stay tuned, the identity crisis is real. What happened in 2009? I had a phone conversation with my mother, then she mentioned Mr. Banks, and she said, don't you remember the guy that I told you who thought he was your father? When she said that to me, Yana, it was a what moment, like, what are you talking about? So she said that he wanted to get in contact with me. I think we, I gave her my number to give to him, or she gave me his number. I can't remember how we actually got in contact. And then I, we reached out to one another. Did you know Mr. Banks? No, Your Honor. You know who he was? No, Your Honor. And this man could be your father? Yes, Your Honor. Emotional roller coaster incoming, Mr. Roberts and Ms. Bronson share a tearjerker moment, revealing the depth of their bond. It's like a soap opera, but with less amnesia and evil twins. Warning, you might want to grab tissues. I was kept in the dark about all this. I never knew anything about Mr. Banks. I also, you know, spent eight months in jail for unpaid child support, and I'm, I'm $75,000 in the risk. And then you get, you don't even get a call. Your fiance comes to you and says, Possibility that Jasmine is not my biological daughter. I had paused for a minute. I was like, what, what? What are you telling me that she may not be my daughter? Enter Mr. Banks, stage left. He recalls a park meet cute with Ms. Bronson that might as well have been directed by Spielberg. But instead of E.T., it's D.T., Dad, TBD. The drama's so thick, you could cut it with a knife. I can recall uh, when she was about six or seven, and I ran to her mother and Jasmine and his sister in the park. And then they, um, she had told me that Jasmine was my uh, my daughter then. Oh, so Jasmine's mother said? Yes. Do you remember the words she used? No, I don't. She, I just recall her, her saying that Jasmine was my daughter. And Jasmine was there too? Yes. Twist alert. Mr. Banks takes Ms. Bronson to meet his mom, turning a casual park day into a potential family reunion. And you thought your play dates were awkward. What's next? A DNA test sponsored by Ancestry.com? It was just, there's Jasmine and she over there playing with kids do, right. that could be your daughter. 13 years, secret persisted. Well, I thought I was going to see her again, never seen the mother again. and never Did you Jasmine exchange again. numbers? Did you yes, say, hey, did. let's keep in touch? Yes, we did. Basically, she took my number, and I uh, said I've never heard from her since, though. Dad jokes aside, Ms. Bronson is not laughing about Mr. Banks' lack of daditude post-park revelation. It's like he missed the memo on How to Dad 101. The anticipation is killing me. Will the real dad please stand up? You you went to his home for Thanksgiving in 2011, that's true? Yes, John, I went to his mother's house. You went to his mother's house? Yes. So after you did that, how long did it take for you to inform the man you believe was your biological father that I had had this encounter with Mr. Banks? I didn't tell Mr. Roberts that happened. At the time, me and Ms. Phil comfortable to tell him. I don't want to be the one to come and tell somebody that you're not my father. That's not my job. Drum roll, please. The DNA results are in. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Roberts, you are not the father. Still my daughter. I love you. You're always going to be my daughter. I love you too. So we kick things off with the wildly entertaining saga of Looper v. Your Downs, a court case more twisted than a pretzel at a yoga class. At the heart of it all, the paternity dispute of the century. Over twins Brayleg and Bishop, Miss Looper is throwing some serious shade at Mr. Downs, claiming he's done a full 180 from his church going. Chuer singing days to denying he's the daddy. Mr. Downs, on the flip side, is like, nope, he couldn't be me, thanks to what he sees as Miss Looper's ninja level secrecy. Miss Looper, you say you thought the defendant was a respect church going family 
man who turned out to be anything but. You claim that after giving birth to your twins, Braley and Bishop, Mr. Downs denied fathering your babies. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Downs, you say Ms. Looper carried on a secret relationship <clears throat> behind your back up until she found out she was pregnant, and there is no way you are the father of her twins. Just when you thought your popcorn couldn't get any saltier, Miss Looper dives into the juicy details of their rom-com gone wrong. Picture this, early days filled with love, laughter, and a suspicious amount of sneaky phone checks. Mr. Downs, meanwhile, stumbles upon some eyebrow-raising messages on Miss Looper's phone, turning his doubt about being the father of the twins, from a maybe to a definitely maybe. The plot thickens, folks. Open door, so you still had other relationships that you had not we quite cut off. Absolutely, this was two weeks after we started hanging out. So we weren't in a relationship, we weren't together. So I did still have open relationships with other men while I was beginning a relationship with Mr. Downs. Take me to the day you saw the phone. What was going on? How did you even have her phone? I was at her house. Just something told me to pick up the phone and I did it and I'm looking through the phone. I'm like, hey, and I bring it to her and I'm seeing messages from other dudes. And now for the roller coaster part of our program, Miss Looper's pregnancy hits the scene and Mr. Downs' support goes on a wild ride from disbelief to playing the doting partner. But here's the kicker. The twins arrive and Mr. Downs is all hold up. Why does Brayleg look like he's auditioning for a role in babies with Ambigu's paternity? DNA test in the hospital? Yep, he went there. We moved really fast. We like had a wedding date in two months. Their relationship changed tremendously though after he went through my phone. Aren't hanging out as much. When I found out I was pregnant, I called him and he didn't even answer. Since so how did he ever find out? I sent him a text message. He was really nonchalant about it, but rub my feet, rub my belly. He would get it by 2 a.m., go get me ice and hot Cheetos. He took me to every ultrasound appointment if he didn't have work. The pregnancy was good. We got a, we moved out of my two bedroom apartment. We got a four bedroom house. Like it, it was good. Just when you're thinking, this can't possibly get more Maury Povich, Miss Looper pulls a, but wait, there's more, and hints at another dude who might be the father. Mr. Downs, bless his heart, is still hanging in there because his motto is apparently once a dad, always a dad, uncertainty, and all. Grab your tissues or maybe just more popcorn. When the twins were born. Um, as soon as they brought Braley into the room, the first thing he said was, do you guys do DNA tests here? I've never had a kid come out that light. That's the first thing he said when he seen her. But he did go see my son and he did say that he looked like him. So when you saw Braley, you had questions instantly. <laughs> You didn't feel like you could be her father. I mean, I know, I know it don't really matter about the complexion and stuff, but like I said, all my kids favor me to, I mean, just extremely, you know what I'm saying? And I looked at Bishop, I seen more Bishop in me than Braley, and at the same time, like I said, I know there's another man been involved. Plot twist, Miss Looper takes the twins and Jets off to California faster than you can say daytime drama, throwing a wrench into their already complex relationship. Mr. Downs is left in the dust, heartbroken, and as confused as a chameleon in a bag of Skittles. Will our star-crossed lovers find a way back to each other? Other, stay tuned. The hospital birth certificate says that the twins were born to us, but I never ordered an official birth certificate. He never signed a birth certificate. I was at work. I would have definitely put my name you on it. You were at work and just, you were at work. You have three other kids. You know, before you leave the hospital, you need to sign a birth certificate. He never asked me about a birth certificate. His cousin took us home from the hospital. If he wanted to sign a birth certificate, I didn't even sign the birth certificate. Did you I not sign the birth certificate, Mr. Downs, because you really had a doubt? As me being a father, like I said, I've never had to deal with any suspicion of any of my other kids. In an emotional review, Miss Looper shares her California dreaming story, painting a picture of seeking a fresh start and a supportive cast for her and the twins. The big question now looms. Will Mr. Downs be part of this new season, or is he being written off the show? Spoiler alert, the paternity test results are in the next episode. How old were the children then? Maybe a month. Miss Looper, I, I gotta understand this. Today you stand before the court saying you are certain Mr. Downs is the father of your twins, but your actions during this time don't seem to indicate that you're trying to keep him connected to the children. I mean, you say I'm unhappy in the relationship, but this is, you're saying this is their father. I felt of, like I had no other option at that time. I felt like I had no other But you believed he was their father. And since that time, I didn't know if this was going to be a permanent decision. I didn't know if I just needed to breathe. Hold on to your hats, folks, because here comes the twist no one saw coming, except maybe everyone. The DNA results are in, and Mr. Downs. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Downs, you are not the father. The next result reads as follows. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Downs, you are not the father.